we can also attempt to estimate the pressure in the right atrium. The IVS bulging toward the left atrium is the better sign that the pressure inside the cavity is abnormally high. Supposedly, this pressure is also abnormal if the inferior vena cava diameter is more significant than 20 millimeters and there is an inspiratory collapse of the IVC less than 50%. This collapse is better demonstrated in M mode than 2D if we must illustrate a picture of a respiratory collapse to someone else since the 2D film clip usually is made with just one cardiac cycle and may not contain one respiratory change. Notice the presence of this kind of smoke in the interior of the IVC, the spontaneous contrast that indicates slow blood flow. Here is an example of a normal sized IVC with more than 50% inspiratory collapse. The correct place to measure the diameter of the IVC is right here, about one centimeter from the entrance of the suprahepatic vein. In this case, we have an IVC larger than two centimeters with almost no inspiratory collapse in the presence of this kind of smoke in its interior, the spontaneous contrast that indicates slow blood flow. Beware of another cause of respiratory variation of the IVC. In this example, the transducer is changing its angulation slightly on the abdominal wall and it is cutting the IVC off its larger diameter and giving a false impression it's suffering respiratory variation. Many authors consider the evaluation of right atrial pressure according to with what they see at the IVC, its diameter and respiratory variation. See it here. When the IVC diameter is less than 20 millimeters, and the respiratory collapse higher than 50%, then the right atrial pressure is considered normal and reported as 5 millimeters of mercury. If the width is less than 20 millimeters and the respiratory collapse less than 50%, the right atrial pressure is then 10 millimeters of mercury. In case the IVC diameter is superior to 20 millimeters, then a distended IVC and the respiratory collapse higher than 50%, then the right atrial pressure is 15 millimeters of mercury. With a distended IVC greater than 20 millimeters and the respiratory collapse less than 50%, then the right atrial pressure would be 20 millimeters of mercury. Some also consider the pressure to be 25 millimeters of mercury if there is a dilated IVC with poor respiratory collapse, but also spontaneous contrast. However, and uh, it is my experience as well, this Fisher's et al. paper shows how difficult it is to use this method to infer the right age of pressure. Using the IVC diameter and its respiratory variation to estimate right age of pressure and comparing with right heart catheterization, there is no good concordance between right age of pressure and this find in the IVC. See here that an estimated right atrial pressure by the echo of 5 millimeters of mercury, it may be almost the triple of that. More importantly, a patient estimated to have 15 millimeters of mercury may have 3 millimeters and close to 50% of them will have a normal pressure or less than 10 millimeters of mercury. See that those estimated to have the pressure of 20 millimeters of mercury, all of them had pressure below this value. And some may have a 4 millimeters of mercury value. There is a superposition of all data, except for these two patients, what makes this most unreliable for clinical application. We will return to discuss this and to talk about pulmonary hypertension evaluation. There is another problem concerning the evaluation of the RA pressure using the IVC. The IVC, as any vein, 
suffers the influence of the force of gravity and hence of its position about the right atrium. Pay attention to this case. We have a dilated IVC with poor respiratory variation. The M mode measured a dilated IVC of 21 millimeters with an inspiratory of 14 millimeters, then less than 50%, indicating a pressure of 20 millimeters of mercury. However, this patient was a young boy with no cardiac or any other problem. See what happened when we looked at the same IVC when the patient was in left lateral decubitus. The IVC now is not enlarged anymore and is collapsing with respiration. Here is the M mode. The IVC decreased from 21 millimeters to 6 millimeters with an inspiratory collapse to only 2 millimeters. Another case of a perfectly normal heart with dilated IVC and reduction of the respiratory collapse that became normal with slight less lateral decubitus. It is very frequent. A dilated IVC is measuring 2.1 with decreased respiratory variation and spontaneous contrast. Now, when in left lateral decubitus, the IVC is 14 millimeters with respiratory collapse. What causes this variation? It may not be the right age of pressure, but the force of gravity. With the patient in the supine position, the right atrium is situated more superior or anterior to the IVC. The blood must go higher against gravity to reach the right atrium, and it engorges the IVC. With the patient in left lateral decubitus, the right atrium now is more inferior than the IVC, and the blood now is going with the help of gravity, and the IVC collapses. If this IVC may be dilated with no respiratory collapse in normal heart, how can I accept it is an indication of a high right age of pressure? Beware to evaluate hydration states in patients in ICU. If the patient is lying down with the head raised or in lateral decubitus.